and welcome back. Today we are doing a speed reviews video. It's been a while since I did... Wait, is this only my second one? Or is this like the third one? It's been a while. So that's what we're doing today. Um, basically these reviews are of random new products that have come into my collection that I've tested normally on TikTok or in some like Instagram reel or in some form or another. Um, and then I just kind of like use them periodically here and there and gather my thoughts on them and then we are going to talk about them. Um, so I have a little hairspray covered container of them. Now I will say this was starting to get a little full so I kind of took a break and then with the new foundation series I was like oh what am I supposed to do? I can't test other products at the same time. And then I was like why? Like I'll get to those categories but at least that'll give me like a good base for my thoughts for like the newer products that are in there right? I'll get a good base for my thoughts. So for example, I know I've got a couple of the Rare Beauty cream blushes in there, um, you know, so I can try them out, gather my thoughts, and then when I focus solely on cream blushes, I'll be able to test them against the other things. So it's, you know, it should work. It could work. We're going to keep doing this series. Thank you. Um, that's, yeah, the long end of it. But I'm pretty excited because there are some good stuff in here. There's some good stuff. Good stuff. So we're going to jump into it. I will have everything linked down below. Um, if you are interested, they are affiliate links, so if you do click on them, um, some of them pay me a little bit if you end up purchasing the product. So if you use those links, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If not, you can just Google uh, the product itself and bypass the links altogether, and that is cool as well. Let us jump in to some sweet reviews. I'm going to start off with uh, probably the most controversial products in here, um, some Physician's Formula products. Now, I was under the impression that Physicians Formula was not cruelty free. And I don't remember what caused me to look into it, um, but I did. And from what I can see, it looks like the internet's kind of divided, but the majority of what I was seeing is that they are. I'm not 100% sure. I'm, listen, y'all know I love Physicians Formula, okay? One of my favorite drugstore brands. So with the knowledge that I have, I feel confident in using them as a cruelty-free consumer. It's not a perfect situation. There's a lot of gray areas involved, but from what I saw, they lean more towards the cruelty-free side. So, okay. Ironically, I did a whole TikTok about it, but they were on sale at Ulta, so I picked up some stuff. I picked up the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This is the OG Butter Bronzer, and you guys, oh. First of all, I love the smell of it. It smells so good. It's so summery. Second of all, I, and I'm wearing a lot of this stuff today. I am wearing these two products today. Um, but I'll like point out kind of what I'm wearing as we go. But I love this bronzer. It's so pretty. It's so soft. It really is like a buttery formula. And it looks so gorgeous on the skin. This is definitely, I think, one of the better bronzers that we've seen from the drugstore lately. The packaging is thick, which I don't personally like because it doesn't fit into the slots of my drawers easily. Um, and I have not tested this one, so we'll have to see, but I really hope it fits. But that's my only gripe with this, is it just, why do they do that? Um, I also picked up the Butter Highlighter in Champagne. This is like a screw top. It's very pretty. It reminds me a lot of the ColourPop um, Super Shock Cheeks, which you guys know. Oh my goodness, I love those so much. The formula is so good. It really does remind me a lot of kind of that texture because it's very creamy, you know, but it kind of melts into this this powder. So I'm wearing this as a highlight today as well. I applied it with a brush and I've been kind of going back and forth with the application of that. And I personally think it looks a lot better with fingers applied because of the texture. Like with the ColourPop Super Shock Cheeks, I feel like you can kind of get away with using a brush with them because it kind of blends out the same. But I feel like this is almost creamier. So finger application is definitely better. I also grabbed this. This is the uh, Physicians Formula All Star Face Palette. So this has, um, ironically, one of the bronzers in it. And then it has a highlight, one of their multicolored powder palettes, um, a matte bronzer, and then this rose highlight. And then you've got the, like that blush kind of bronzer blush, the heart bronzer blush. Um, this is nice. It's a little cardboard palette. I like this because this is just easier for me than the individual thing. You know what I mean? And, and now that I'm doing this, ugh, like going through my whole collection project, that's kind of overtaking my brain and I'm trying really hard not to let it. But I don't think that I like face palettes. Like I do a little bit, but I have a feeling that a lot of my face palettes are going to go when the time comes. We'll have to see, obviously. That's one of those things like I don't want you guys to feel like if, you know, if I say that I like it, but that I don't want to keep it, I'll definitely explain my reasonings as to why. 
I just, I don't know. I do love this palette. This is a gorgeous palette and I enjoy using it. I just don't know at the end of the day, do I like palettes or do I like singles better? This is why, this is why we're doing this. I do, this is, ugh. If you've been interested in trying out like more than one product from Physicians Formula, I'd recommend just grabbing the palette if you are like a palette person. And that's really what it comes down to. My brain is all over the place, y'all. And I really do like how convenient like face palettes are. Um, I just think that you have to be able to use every single shade in there. So if your skin tone would be able to use all of these shades, like I can because I've tried them all, um, then I definitely think it's a worthwhile purchase because it's a stand-up palette. You've got six kind of classic, the all-star, if you will, um, products from the Physicians Formula line, and they are all great products. So I like that one. I am interested to see how my overall view on face palettes has changed once I make it to like that category of my makeup collection, but I really do enjoy that palette like as a whole. Um, the Dominique Cosmetics Skin Gloss in Glossed Peach. So I have one of these um, that is more of like kind of a champagne-y shade. And since I've been doing that, the viral TikTok base routine, um, I've been putting this all over my face. So this one is a little bit more difficult because this is such a darker, highlight however it blends out really nicely and so I was like super concerned the first time I tried this but it blends out really nicely and it looks super pretty on the skin and I feel like typically like today I'm using the Huda Beauty Glowish foundation I feel like typically with a shade of cream highlight like this I would kind of lean more towards a very glowy foundation to get kind of a glowy skin I didn't use this today I ended up using the um Drunk Elephant Bronzy Drops but I do like this the shade while definitely scary for someone as pale as myself actually looks really beautiful on the skin if you are using it as a traditional cream highlight um, I do think that as long as you blended it okay, it would look good. Um, I will say there is a lot of shimmer in here and it does pour, come across as a very, very shimmery highlight. So that is something to just keep in mind. It's like a sheeny shimmer. Oh my goodness. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. So yes, love this. Um, I purchased this because I loved the original one and I hit pan in my original one. And so I really wanted to try a new shade and this shade while kind of outside of my comfort zone, I actually did really enjoy. I also grabbed a new shade of the Charlotte Tilbury Chic to Chic Blush in Walk of No Shame. These were like marked down on some website. And I, this is, oh, I mean, your stereotypical nipple blush, right? This, these are some of my favorite blushes because I love that the fact that you've got the outer color and the inner color. And you can kind of, you kind of have three blush shades in that regard. You know, you've got the outer color, you have your inner color, and you can combine them. So I personally combine them. This is the blush the powder blush that I'm wearing today. Um, you can go light handed with this. You can build it up to get more of a pigmented color. But these blushes, and I have a couple of them in various shades, I love so much. This one is on the darker side, obviously, but with a light hand, it looks gorgeous. Even honestly, like even if you do kind of build it up and make it go a little bit darker, I still think that looks so pretty. So I love these blushes. If you have not tried them, they are on the expensive side, but they are very good, like well-made, good quality blushes. I personally love them. And again, it's like you're getting three blushes in one, which makes the price a little bit easier to stomach. But I really enjoy these blushes. Like they are so gorgeous. And all of the shades that I have, I like. They're so pretty. Next product, I did, I no. Oh, this is the NYX Wonder Stick. It's a dual ended face shaping stick. I have this in the shade Fair. So this is a cream contour stick. You've got like the contour on one side, the highlight on the other side. Um, the highlight is pretty. I'll give you that. Uh, the contour, however, it's just it's very light, and I don't love the shape of this stick. I don't know why. I just feel like, and I, I this is another product I'm wearing today, but I just feel like you can't really see it. It blends out into almost nothingness. It just doesn't do what I want a cream contour to do. Um, I like, I enjoy the fact that it has the highlight at the end of it. However, for like contouring, if I'm going to use a highlight, I tend to prefer like a matte highlight in that situation. You know, something that's not coated in shimmer because for contour, you know what I'm saying? And this is a traditional like shimmer highlight. I've been trying a lot of like the newer NYX products lately and so many of them have been so good, but this one I just can't get on board with. I'm just not personally a fan of it. Meh. I have so many of these just like brow and liner products. So let's run through some of these, shall we? I have some new of the newer NYX brow products. The Thick It Stick It Thickening Brow Mascara. This is heavy duty, y'all. I am not confident enough in my brows 
to use this on like a regular basis and I've used this several times now and it still makes me just nervous because it's so I'm not wearing it today I'm wearing a totally different brow product today but um, it just makes me so nervous Do you know what I mean <laughs> So honestly, I feel like even with, and I've tried it several times, I feel like even so, I, I'm not comfortable enough to like speak on it. Like, do you guys ever get those products where like, I genuinely don't know how I feel about it, even after using it so many times, because it's just so out there. Um, it is an interesting product. If you like your brows to not freaking move, if you like to, I, and I will say this about this, the one thing that I do really like about it is because I usually have kind of like a sparse area in my brow right here. Um, I normally can't just use like a tinted brow gel and I normally have to go in with a pencil on top of it. I don't need to for that. It fills in at the same time that it like plumps them up. Like I will say that about it. Um, but it is just, you have to work quickly with it. You know what I mean? So I'm not totally sold on that one. Um, I also tried the brow glue. I do like this, but this is glue. I, uh, the first time that I used it, I completely underestimated it and it ended up like everything was locked down and I was screwed because I just, it dried. Um, but in general, you have to work quickly with it, but I actually do like it as like a brow gel, right? Because this does hold your shit down. If you have, a, like if you have plans and you don't want your brows to move or, or smudge or smear or fade or whatever brows do, this will hold them all down. Guaranteed. This is, it's like super glue for your brows. So I really, really liked that one. Um, I also tried the Hourglass Arch Brow Voluminizing Fiber Gel. This is one of those gels. It's, you know, it's like the NYX Thick It Stick It, but it's just the gel. Um, so I do like this. I do need to use like a brow pencil or something with it. I can't just use this. Um, but I will say the shade that I have is Arch, which is a dark brunette shade. That shade does actually work for my brows. It doesn't quite look like it, but it does work. And I do like this because it does add like a little bit of volume. It is a fiber gel, so it does make your brows look a little thicker. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it. I do like to use a pencil with it just to fill in the sparse areas and then kind of use this as like the, you know what I mean, as the gel. Um, so I do like it, but it's not the perfect brow product. I have two liners. Um, I have the 1.5 mm mechanical gel eyeliner in obsidian. This is the eyeliner I'm wearing today. I don't know why these little like the thinner liners I don't like and they always hurt my eyes. The liner itself is gorgeous. The shade is beautiful. So this will probably like probably end up being one that I end up keeping like when I end up going through my eyeliners. But I don't think in the future I want to buy the 1.5 mm's. And now I could change my mind because maybe it ends up working out better for me than like the thicker ones because the thicker ones tend to smudge a lot because my eyes are small. I don't know. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this because like wh which one do I like more? Do I like traditional eyeliners? Or do I like these skinny eyeliners? I don't know. And I feel like I like the more traditional liners because these skinny ones piss me off. But we'll have to find out. Either way though, this is a nice liner. If you like the thinner, kind of like the 1.5 mm, um, then this is a great one because the shade is beautiful. It is a nice like formula for the eyeliner. Um, but the sizing just, I feel like if you're one of those people who kind of tight lines, this would be a better liner for you than if you're doing it like in your waterline. All these questions I have now, like I used to be so sure of myself, but I mean like that's good, right? We want to be questioning things. We want to make sure, like I always thought that I liked matte foundation and now here we are, who knows. Um, but I do, I did like the eyeliner. I just, I don't know if I like the size of the eyeliner. And then we also had the Voyeur Waterproof Liquid Liner from Hourglass. This one was okay. It wasn't my favorite. It wasn't, I feel like I just have to go over it so many times to get kind of like that super opaque black. And I don't wanna have to do that, you know what I mean? Like it was all right, <clears throat> but for the price, I think, and actually, oh, I can show you right here. Um, comparing these two head to head, the Hourglass Voyeur and then the NYX Epic Ink Liner, um, I like, and this is the one that I'm wearing today, and I like this one more, the NYX one, because I feel like you just, this comes out, I mean, well, and this shade is black, but this just comes out as like an opaque in your face black and this is just on like maybe the softer side so if you're going for softer makeup this would be a good one if you want the just very like heavy liner this would be the good one um so different 
different things that they each do well. In my personal opinion, I like the NYX one better. And now again, that could change. <laughs> that could change, but I like my liner to be like really sharp. I never put on mascara today. Y'all, I am losing it. What is happening? I keep catching my lashes like in the mirror and I'm like, what is wrong with them? Why do they look so just sad? And um, yeah, that would be why, because I never put mascara on. Really quickly, this is the Elizabeth Mott It's So Big Voluminizing Mascara. I've had this for so long and just never used it. And so I'm finally using it and I don't like it very much. It just, I don't feel like it does like, it, I don't feel like it does a whole lot. All right, um, oh, the Patrick Ta Precision Gel Liner. Um, this is in black, y'all. This is an amazing, amazing liner. I love this. And this is, okay, see, it, this, it all ties together. This is what I'm saying. If I had to compare the Hourglass, which is the thinner one, to the Patrick Ta, which is more of like the traditional size of an eyeliner, I like the Patrick Ta so much more. It's so creamier. It's easier to smudge if you want it to smudge, but it'll stay in place if you don't. Um, I just prefer overall this one. So again, like I said, I'm excited to see how they kind of compare up to each one. But the Patrick Ta eyeliner is so pretty. It's such a good... Plus, it makes you feel so bougie using it. Like, just... <laughs> like that feeling. Um, then I tried the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Cheat Micro Precision Brow Pencil. This one was pretty good. Uh, it does have kind of like a slanted tip, which I'm not usually a big fan of. However, this is like a small one, right? So what you've got, and ironically, this isn't even a brow, but this kind of is the same. Like you've got like the bigger chiseled tips, right? And then this is kind of like a mini chisel. And it makes it really easy to apply. And I feel like if most of the chisel tips were on the smaller side like this and not on the just oversized side, I'd like them a lot more because I did like this one. I'm not the biggest fan of the packaging because this always comes out. Can you get a refill? I don't know. But that drives me bonkers. Um, and then it's got like a spoolie on one side as usual. So I did like the brow cheat, but it is at the end of the day a brow pencil. Like there's nothing over the top exciting or special about it. It is just a brow pencil. Will I buy it again in the future? I don't know. Maybe. But it is, I mean it's a brow pencil. And then, oh, I tried the NYX Epic Smoke Liner. So it's an angled liner and blender. I like the concept of this, okay? I really do because it's an interesting concept. However, I don't like the blender. This like kind of paddle brush blender, I just don't feel like works the greatest. Um, and maybe part of it is, see, I just, I don't like the way that it blends. I just don't like the way that it blends. So I feel like for something like this, um, I would enjoy a lot more if there was a different brush on it. You know what I mean? I like the smoky liner, that's great. This is a very creamy pencil, so it's very easy to get the smoky liner effect, right? And that's great, but, I don't like the blender. So for me, I have to use a different brush, which is fine. However, it does become a little inconvenient because the entire point of this being on this side is to blend it out. Um, so using a different brush kind of negates that. And that's my gripe with it. It's a fine liner, but the blender is not my favorite. And because of that, I tried a couple of different primers. Um, the Smashbox Photo Finish Illuminate Glow Primer. Now this one, um, again, I don't know, and I mentioned this before, I don't know if this is repackaged primers or if these are brand new primers. I still have yet to figure that out. However, it really doesn't matter. Um, I do like this primer. It's not my favorite by any means, but it comes out, it almost looks like, like a kind of a cream highlight. Um, but it comes out and it blends in. It does provide a really nice glow to the skin. It does illuminate. It does do all of that really well. Um, so if you're somebody who, like, and this I feel like would be especially great if you want to try the, like, viral TikTok base routine, but you don't want to put cream highlight all over your face, because I get it, like, it's a little much. Um, this is a great kind of alternative. Now, me personally, I use this with cream highlight. Glow, baby glow. Um, but... 
I do think that this would be kind of a nice alternative if you wanted something a little bit lighter, if you wanted the viral base without the coverage, if you, you know, if you were looking for kind of just a lighter version of it, this would be a great primer to do. If you want just a glowy base, this is a good primer. Um, I don't, like, obviously it's not as glowy as putting a cream highlight all over your face, but it does give you a good glow, and if you've enjoyed Smashbox primers in the past, you'd probably like this one too, because it is a good formula, as they typically have been. And then I used this today. This is the NYX Hydra Touch Oil Primer. Um, I think the packaging on this is cool, because you kind of twist it, and then you, like, unscrew it. Um, the dropper on this, it does work, but as you can see, I'm not touching it, and it's kind of falling out. So you have to work quickly. Um, it is very oily. Yeah, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, it's an oil primer. But in my head, I'm kind of comparing it to the Smashbox Primer Oil, which is like a thicker oil. This is like a thinner oil. But it's still, oil like, so it's not like a serum texture. It's still like an oil texture, but it's like a thinner, more liquidy version of the Smashbox Primer Oil. Um, and so I plan to try them kind of both comparatively. Um, when I do my primer section because I am interested to see you know how they work together off of the bat this is not my favorite um, I feel like if you want a good oil primer the Smashbox one I don't even know if they still make the Smashbox oil primer though do they okay they do it's the photo finish lightweight oil primer for dry skin um, so yeah they still make it it's available now it obviously is more expensive than the next one but I don't know it just having tried this without going back to directly compare it to Smashbox. I like the Smashbox one better. Obviously that opinion might change, but this is just a little too thin. It makes my skin feel greasier than like the Smashbox oil makes my skin feel. I'm just not the biggest fan of it, but I mean, it, it gives you a good base though. Um, I just feel like there's better ones out there. I finally tried Tower 28 products. Um, I'm wearing both of these today. I have the Magic Hour in Beach Please. This is like a cream lip and cheek. Um, I use it as a cream blush. I'm wearing it today. I love it. It's so light. If you like the lighter, no makeup, this is for you. I personally prefer, obviously, a little bit heavier makeup. But even so, I think this is so pretty. Like, the shade of it. And if you are one of those people that likes to match your... Um, lips to your cheeks this is a great product for it it blends out beautifully wanting to try the tower 28 products for a long time and this was well worth the wait i think it's absolutely gorgeous and from what i've seen they're way more on the affordable side than i thought that they were like it's not drugstore pricing but they are definitely more affordable than i was expecting but look, I mean, look at the shade. I think this is their best selling shade, which makes sense to me because like this would look beautiful on everyone, uh, but it's just so gorgeous and the formula is so good and it blends out so well. Oh, I love this. This is like one of my favorite cream blushes right now, y'all. And then I also tried the Shine On Lip Jelly in Pistachio. This is, I believe, it's either their best selling shade or their newest shade. I'm not 100% sure. Here's my opinion as someone who is not a huge lip gloss person. There's something about, I don't know why, y'all. Um, and I know that this is kind of the lip gloss for people who don't like lip glosses is what it's been touted as online. It is so pretty and it makes your lips feel so good. This is probably one of the most moisturizing lip glosses I've ever had. Y'all know my favorite lip gloss is the Fenty Gloss Bombs. Um, and I do love those, but this might even be a little bit more comfortable. Um, my gripe with it is that it does not last. Obviously, I had put it on right before I sat down to film this, and already I had to reapply it. And you can tell, like, the difference between before I reapplied it and after I reapplied it. It fades incredibly fast, so I feel like this is something you'd have to carry around with you. Even, uh, like, up against other lip glosses, I feel like this fades faster. Now, having said that, it almost fades into your lips, like a lip oil, right? It's almost like one of those, um, like, balm, balm oils, right? It feels so good on the lips and it sinks in to the lips as it fades so it ends up just hydrating your lips and they feel so soft and I don't know <laughs> this is my issue I had there's such extreme pros and cons because I love everything about it except for the fact that it does not last and you have to keep reapplying it I like stuff that I can set for hours and go so I typically use like liquid lipsticks or something like that so I guess the big question is would I be okay with like taking it with me and, and continually having to remember to reapply it I don't know it's not sticky right so if you if you don't like lip glosses because they're sticky this would be the lip gloss to try 
um, if you are a lip gloss fan. Like, I do recommend it to try it because it is that great. You just have to know going into it, you're going to have to reapply. Um, I have the NYX Bear With Me Luminous Cheek Serum. This is in the shade Sienna Bronze, so it's a pretty dark shade, but it's actually very pretty. Uh, I really like, I don't know why, these like liquid cheek products that come in tubes. I've used so much of this, you guys. It's like not even funny. Uh, but I really like these kind of cheek products that come in tubes. And this one is really nice because it is a, a brush of color. It's a hint of color, right? You can really sheer it out. And it's because it's a it's a cheek serum, so it's not like a cheek, it's not like a cream blush, right? It's a it's a serum blush. So it's much more on the lighter side. It's much easier to sheer out or to blend out if you don't want anything super heavy. So even with a darker shade like this, oh, it looks gorgeous on the skin. Um, I'm using the Tower 28 one today, not this one obviously, but I've used so much of this because I can't like it's so it's good. It's a good cream blush. Like I enjoy it. Um, I love the fact that and you can build it up too. I have and that's one of the reasons why I've used so much because um, I have just applied extra layers and kind of built up the coloring a little bit and it's gorgeous if you sheer it out it's gorgeous like this is one of those all around I think genuinely think that it can work for just about anybody you know they've got some different shades obviously but I think they can work for just about anybody as far as your preferences go because you can do just about anything with it and it's going to look good and it's foolproof because you can just sheer it out like it's great it's great this definitely Highly recommend. I'm loving that thus far. Um, the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. This is on the heavier side. Um, as far as like powder foundations go, I usually use powder foundations as just powder to kind of set my makeup. And I will say this is the first one that I've kind of stepped back and I've been like, well, over because this has coverage to it. Um, however, it is a very dry formula like it is an incredibly dry formula and I've put some like I kind of swatched a little bit on my arm and I can tell where it is because it just makes my skin look dry so using this as a powder just to set everything a very light layer isn't the worst but it's also not the best and as far as powder foundation goes like it's this is an incredibly dry formula it's not my favorite I don't have high hopes for this like making it through my collection um but it's it's here for now I don't know have you guys tried this one this just really concerns me because I have kind of combo skin that leans dry but like if you have dry skin y'all mm. and it, I mean I don't know I love the packaging of it because it's like really good stand-up packaging and it does come with like a little sponge which is nice because you can kind of just you know I just feel like it's so it just looks so dry it's not I'm not the biggest fan of it. Uh, speaking of powders, the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is, I have a little mini that I'm using up and shot my samples right now, and this one is like, it's just shaped weirdly. I'm not a huge fan of the shape, but the powder itself is really nice, and it's definitely more of a kind of like a luxe feeling powder, right? It feels great on the skin. I did use it to kind of set everything today. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it's translucent, right? So you can't really expect it to give you much coverage, but as for a setting powder goes, I do think it works really well. Um, now again, you've got the cost to think about. This is a more expensive loose powder. I don't necessarily think it does anything more, like better than a more affordable powder would or does and I have a lot more that are cheaper than this that I enjoy as well so I don't necessarily think that you'd have to go out and like rush out and buy this one it is good if you want like a little splurge item and you are like a loose powder lover this would be a good one to pick up um, but overall I like this powder I don't think it's crazy good though you know what I mean all right last product here and I think this might be one of my favorites but one of the most like polarizing okay this is the Fenty Beauty Diamond Balm all over Diamond Veil and how many carats do y'all see I'm, I'm trying not to blind you do y'all see this packaging then wait for it wait for it you guys this is my favorite highlight like <sighs> it's so pretty and every time I wear this I get um, comments on it because it's so different but it's so beautiful and if you like especially in the summertime this wet skin look this is the highlight for you it is very glittery but it gives your skin this kind of like wet this wet look glossed vibe right it is stunning um, but it is very glittery so it's one of those things like you have to be okay with I don't know how well you can see it you have to be okay with the glitter 
but it looks gorgeous and it gives your skin this like wet look like if you if you are partaking in the like I want to be seen from outer space if you want the the wets I this it really does look it, man it works for a large variety of different like wants I am a huge highlighter fan and this is like my favorite it's a little over the top right but it gives you just this I mean it's a wet look oh my goodness I've never liked the like the kind of wet glossy look on myself until this and it's like such a I don't even know like I mean I'm assuming it's a powder I'm gonna make myself sound so dumb but it feels there, there are no words there are no words this is fabulous this is my favorite out of everything that we've talked about today this is I cannot stop using it it looks so gorgeous I get compliments every time I use it I am obsessed with I'm obsessed with it that is all I have to say about it you guys I will say most of the products that I've been trying uh I have liked and that's good like that's you know we want we want to enjoy the products however um i am interested to see how many of them last on my collection just once i compare them to you know products that maybe i've forgotten about like if i try out every single bronzer that i own maybe it turns out that this comparatively isn't the greatest even though as on its own i enjoy it you know what i mean and so that's i'm really interested to see how all of this kind of holds up to stuff that's already in my collection but I ended up liking most of it, so I have pretty high hopes that they're going to be products that kind of continue on through. Um, well, except for a couple of them, because a couple of them, you know, are not doing so great. That contour stick, I just this was not impressive, like in the least. So, um, let me know if you guys have tried any of this stuff and what your thoughts on the products are down below. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I love doing these speed review videos. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below me if you'd like to see more of me. I will catch y'all next time. Have a great one. Goodbye.